I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live again. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Man that is born of a woman has but a few days and full of trouble. He cometh forth like a flower and is cut down. He fleeth also as a shadow and continueth not. We brought nothing into this world and it is certain we can carry nothing out. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If there are any pastors in the sanctuary, you are welcome to the pulpit.
Somebody ought to just lift your hands and give God glory. Hallelujah. Won't that be a great day? Hallelujah. God be the glory. We are here today to celebrate the life. Can't you just hear him saying, well done? <laughs> Thy good and faithful servant. We come to have service today. I think it would be an indictment to God to come in his house and not give him praise. As we go further into this service, we pray. We're praying for the family. We ask you that are here that you will continue to pray for them. But the word of the Lord says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I know somebody here got some joy. We can ready to move. I'm, I'm not going to be jumping up and down, so I'm just going to give you what somebody's going to do and for a few. And, uh, but I can't help but to remember as a young man driving on my way to work to Blue Cross and Blue Shield and hearing on the radio a sweet voice saying right now if you believe yeah. listen if, you, if you, you're in the right place at the right time and I believe a miracle can yet happen in this place today all right all right Listen, at this time, our Old Testament scripture is coming from Elder Andre Hill, following by our New Testament scripture, Superintendent Roland, Ronald Roland, amen, following by which we will have our prayer by Elder Anway, An Edwin Edwards, excuse me. Praise the Lord, saints. An honor to be here on behalf of Pat Moore and her family. Thank you, preacher. I said, I'm going to read the Old Testament scripture coming out of the book of Psalms. 
the 23rd chapter, it says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thine rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. The last verse, the sixth verse says, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Thank you. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. I come to do my job that was asked of me. But you know I'm just trying to keep myself. We're here because she lived. Mm. The gospel according to St. John 7 and 33 says, Then said Jesus unto them, Yet a little while I am with you. And then I go unto him that sent me. Skipping down to the 37th verse, it says, In the last day, that great day of feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, uh, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. God bless you. Unto thee, O God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give your name praise. For there's none like you in all the earth. God, we've searched all over. We've looked high and we've looked low. God, and we couldn't find anybody like you. For God, you are great. And you do miracles so well. And there is no one else like you. So we take time now to tell you thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Realizing it wasn't the alarm clock that woke us up this morning, but it was you. And for that, we tell you thank you. You allowed us and you have kept us all week long. Couldn't nobody do that, God, but you. And for that, we tell you thank you. We got the activities of our limbs. We can walk and we can talk, God. And for that, we tell you thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you, God. In the midst of it all, God, you alone are worthy to be praised, God. So we praise you through the good and the bad, God. We praise you whether we're happy or sad. God, we give you glory on today, God. Hallelujah. We honor you on today, God. We magnify you, God. You're worthy to be praised, God. So we praise you now. We may be heavy laden, but God, we give you glory. We honor you, God, and we lift you up. For there's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, Lord. There's nobody like you, God. So we thank you, oh God. God, in the name of Jesus, as we gathered on today, God, we ask that you look on this Parker family, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, one by one and name by name, you know what the need is. I ask that you lift up every bow down head, God. Come with this family as only you can, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Even, God, as we prepare to worship you and praise you, oh God, in the service of remembrance, God. We ask, God, that you give us the spirit of praise for the garment of heaviness, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us to praise you like Pat would want us to praise you on today, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Put clapping in our hands. Hands, God, put running in our feet, God. Help us to lift you up, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll give you the glory, we'll give you the honor, and we'll give your name the praise in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. This time we're going to have remarks from the pulpit. We thank God for Bishop Douglas as he's coming 
to the podium at this time. Come on, put your hands up together and give God some praise. The psalmist said, I will bless the Lord at all times. Is there anybody in here got an all-time praise? Yeah. My God, my God. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth that's a big word all all is when you want to and when you don't want to but I will bless the Lord at all times would you help me I will bless the Lord Some of you don't know me, but there is no way I didn't come to be on program. I came to be in worship with you because this was a worshiper. This is a crown jewel of the body of Christ. And if you know her work and her labor was not in vain, would you celebrate with me? give deference to the pulpit and to this pastor that is uh, he's doing a fine job Amen. would you celebrate Pastor Newton with me? he is carrying on legacy to support the work that his father preceded him with and I commend him in his labor of love. And I commend you, Christian Tabernacle, in your labor of love toward this family. Family, look up. Look up, and if you look up, you might see Pat. The Bible said there is a great cloud of witnesses. When your head want to go down, look up. Look to the hills from where your help come from. Your help come from the Lord. Not Buddha, Harry Krishna, Father, Divine, Daddy, Grace, none of them. But what we know and what we are steadfast on is Job said something, but then we have the answer. Paul give us the answer and Job said, can a man, a man live? After he dies, well, family, death was not designed by God. Death comes out of disobedience and sin. So you have the time as long as you've got breath in your lungs. And, and it's one thing to want to be where somebody is, and it's another thing to live so you can be. And I challenge and, ur and urge and encourage each one of you darling family members today that she has put her labor in. The Bible tells us that Paul goes on to tell us that there's no sting for those who are in the Lord. Be in the Lord today. None of those other religions can, can take you to where Pat is. None. N-O-N-E, none. I've looked at the religions, you see the religions, and we may all be kings and queens, but there's only one king of kings and one Lord of Lord. So I urge you today, my brothers and sisters, look into the sunshine of Jesus. On Monday, there will be an eclipse. Well, they tell me, that's what they tell me, they tell me that when Jesus was on the cross for our sins, there was a solar eclipse. Y'all not going to talk to me. And the sun refused to shine because he bore the pains and sicknesses for even Pat. 
so to today she can sit with him on high. God bless you, family. Bishop Frank Douglas and Sister Carmen, we love you, and there's not a thing you can do about it. You can call on us if you need it. God bless you. That was a time when we were young and coming up in faith mission that when, oh yeah, young. And by Pat being the choir director and she give our parts, don't sing your part wrong if Pat gave you a part. She's taught us to stay within the ledger line of great big dogs fight animals, all cows eat grass. Only musicians know what that is. That's the lines and spaces of the treble clef. She also taught the bass clef, great big dogs fight animals, all cows eat grass. We're moving along. I mean, no laughter is a medicine. And it's good for the soul. Amen. At this time, we'll have a selection coming from the choir. I just want to say as the choir comes, all of the songs that you'll be hearing today will be songs that Pat Parker led. These are all songs that she were familiar, no, known by. So these are in tribute to her. So pray for the choir, will you?
never leave me alone When I thought I was about to lose my mind The Lord stepped in And he did it on time Keeping me. At this time, we're going to have remarks from the immediate family at this time. Come on, give God another hand praise. He's worthy. Glory to God. Good morning, everybody. That is one thing she would have said all through the years. God has kept her. <laughs> um, I'm just going to read something uh, here for you guys. It says, I'm f I am free. Don't grieve for me. For now, I am free. I'm following the path God has chosen for me. I took his hands when I heard him call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, or to play. Tasks that were left undone, they just have to stay that way. I've now found peace at the end of the day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joys. A friendship shared, a laugh or a kiss. Oh yes, these things I too will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. Look for the sunshines that are of tomorrows. My life has been full I have savored so much. <sighs> good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. <clears throat> Perhaps my time seems all too brief. Don't lengthen your pain with undue grief. Lift up your heart and peace unto thee. God wanted me now. He has set me free. 
And the way she would have put it, because she sung everything, <laughs> she would have said, I am free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. I'm no longer bound. There's no more pains holding me. My soul is resting. And it's such a blessing. That's what she, all she wanted. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I am now free. Thank you. Glory to God. Yeah. Yee. I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. At this time, we have selected remarks. At this time, from Evangelist Rosemary Lambert, Cheryl Cobar, Erica Withers, Robin Morgan, Ronald Hill, Wilbur Smith Jr., Mother Mary Tyler, and Carol Redford, in that order. God bless you. I give honor to God. I thank God for being here. Yeah. I'm here amongst, I never thought this, that I would be the old, I'm not the oldest one here, but I'm older than most of you guys. That's right. That's right. I've, I've come a long ways with you guys, and I thank God for it. But um, I want to give honor to the pulpit, to my son, Wilbur, and to everybody, all the saints of God, to our bishops, I love all of you guys, and I just graduated today, everybody. I just became an evangelist. I didn't know I was not. <laughs> I thank God for all of you guys. But I'm here today in honor of my great friend, Pat. And you could, and my son named her Patter. She didn't let anybody call her Patter either. Tori can tell you that. Only Junior called Pat Patter. Pat was Patter. When Junior was born, I was waiting for my husband. I think I stayed in labor for a week trying to hold Junior till he got here. He was in Virginia. And finally, I couldn't take it any longer. My great friend, Sister Alice Haynes and Sister Mary Tyler came on to the hospital, but Alice walked to my house off of a 1807, now Victor, no, it wasn't Victor, whatever it was, over there by you all, Keith, by y'all's church, y'all's first church. That's right. <laughs> well, it was over there, and Alice Haynes walked to my house to take me to the hospital. And I got to the hospital on a Friday morning before day. And I held that child until Friday night. And I just knew I was dying. And Alice Haynes stayed there with me all day long. When I finally decided to deliver, I told the doctor, I'm dying. He said, no, you're not dying. You're having this baby. I had Junior, a special child in my life. And I had him. And um, his dad came got here on Saturday morning from Elder Karutz in Portsmouth, Virginia. He got here to the hospital, got there, and, we, and uh, to see us. We, we finally went home on that Monday. And as we went home, I said, um, he would say, I got to go back out. You know, back in the day, my husband had a, uh, he was the evangelist. 
He was going out of town about every week. He'd be just back in town on Sundays. But he was gone. He was working. He worked that field. But they said, work that thing. He worked it. And we didn't have anybody to stay with us when, when I came home with Junior. And he said, I will get Pat. And he got Pat to come and stay with me and, and June June. And Pat did. Pat told me, she said, I can't cook. She said, but I can, do, I can clean and I can take care of this baby. And I said, well, you do the cleaning and taking care of the baby, and I do the cooking. And that's how June June got attached to Patter. Patter stayed with him until my husband came back. But I love, me and Pat worked together. Now, on the, on the, bit, on the program, it, it kind of made Pat seem like they jumped from church to church. But Pat came to Faith Mission and stayed at Faith Mission for many years. And we worked together. And we never had a crossword. Now, you can't say that about a lot of y'all. Because you know how when y'all get in something, y'all want to take over. Pat and June June was the director. And we worked together. My husband would go away and bring. My husband said, don't ever go anywhere unless you can get something to bring back to your home, to your church, to make it better. I brought back the nursing unit. Come on, come on. Years ago when I came here in 1965, wasn't no nurses in the pulpit nursing with the husband. And I had lived in Chicago every sum, summer at Bishop Ford's church with my aunt. Every summer from 12 years on. And I saw those nurses in Chicago, how they, how they interacted. I told my husband, you need to get you some nurses to help you, because I can't do it all. <laughs> And I was not a jealous woman with my husband. No, no. Now you can tell, I, I said, you need some nurses to help you. Right. He got, we got nurses to help. Right. Many nurses. Yes. And they was good nurses. Good nurses. They looked good. Look good. They knew how to carry themselves. Yes. So that's how the nurses started out. We would know, I ain't tell you, we would know me. Yes. But he, he would train us. Yes. And you young men, what the son said, y'all got a long way to go. Come on. <laughs> settle down. Settle down. See, I can teach you. I'm not even, but I can teach you. <laughs> settle down and be who you are. Because, you know, I know this thing right here. <laughs> Had a wonderful mother. Yes. I love her. Yes. And Key. Oh, talk about it. Keith is very settled, just, you know, I'm just, I, I love him dearly, and he knows that. But I'm telling you, Pat and the Parkers were good workers. We worked together. <laughs> Hubert brought the song back to the choir from Detroit, Michigan, right now. Yeah. If you believe, brought the tape back. Yeah. That's how he would do. He said, now, Pat, y'all, I want this song. And that's how we got the song. Mm -hmm. And Pat, a lot of the things he brought back because he was, he, he was a builder. He was interested in building your church. Now, you don't have to worry about no positions and all this stuff. Position will come. You don't have to work. It will come if you do right. My pastor, where I go, he, when he became over the chairman of the General Assembly, he was so excited. He said, How you, what you think about that? I said, I don't like that. He said, what? I said, I don't like that. You... I was trained in the old church. Some of y'all may have come from the South. I was trained in the old church where they used to say the word, charity begins at home. And then it spreads abroad. You can't do no, no more nowhere else than you do at home. Build your own house. I can tell you how to get something. Build your house. You build your house, it'll spread. People look, if you catch on fire, somebody come see you burn up. Now, I can tell you that. Now, you know that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm, but anyway, I thank God for my beautiful friend, Pattern. Junior, listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to sit down. The last words Junior told me was, was uh, Thursday night. He had had a successfully colonoscopy surgery. Was in the hospital for 12 days. Left the hospital and went to the rehab. 
And at the rehab, he did wonderful. The nurses was calling me, reporting how he was doing. And on Thursday night, he called me. He said, Mama. I said, yeah. He said, everything in my body seemed like it's shutting down. All his, all his bodily signs were gone. And, and on, he, said, he said, but uh, he was talking real faint. He said, but I want you to, uh, he said, remember, check on Sister, Mary, Sister Tyler. Check on her mama. And he said, and check on Pat. Please check on Pat. Those were the words out of his, last words out of his mouth. Check on Pat. He said, he said, and I love you, mama. Those were, and on, by, on Saturday, my son was dead. He told me what to do. And he wasn't telling me nothing because I would call, I wasn't in Pat's house and I knew Pat. And I would, and everything I would ask Pat, she, I would go by there and I said, I got something for you. And I said, come out, come out. Can you come out? She'd come out to the, and I would give it to her. So me and Patty, we had a good understanding. We loved each other. She was a special person. You had to be a special person. Like her, her and old Ronnie there. They was, she would beat him up and everything. But me and Pat was special. I loved Pat. I really did. And it's, I, it's hard for me. I had to pray and ask God to help me. And I'm going to sit down, but I'm going to leave. And I know you know them. But her signature songs for me, I don't know about for you, but her signature songs for me was, uh, uh, right now, if you can believe. When I, that was the last thing I laid on her bed out there at her ignite. And I said, I just sang it, I just whispered it right now. And then, right now, if you can believe, God will work a miracle for you. And then her other song, which I gave to her at her last birthday party was, Lord, I try. I wish I could sing it right now to make it on my own. But the burdens in my life, they got a little too strong. But right now, I can say, without Christ in my life, there is no other way. There is no way. I can live without you. I was honored that I was asked by Pat to speak at Shirley's Celebration of Life, and now I'm really honored to speak at Pat's. I can't sing, and you don't want me to. That's a blessing. <laughs> but I will share some words about Pat Parker and how I knew her and loved her. Pat and Shirley came to work at Market Research around the early 1990s. I'd only been there a couple of years, and it was my first real job. I interviewed them both together. They came as a package. <laughs> and I hired them right on the spot. I immediately felt a connection to them, and, and I knew that they would be an asset to the company. I'll speak mostly of Pat because this is her celebration. Pat was an instant friend and a confidant to me as much as she was an employee. She was a telephone interviewer. She worked in a cubicle every day. She called people up on the phone to try to get them to do a survey. And you all know how hard a job that is. How many times have you hung up on somebody calling you <laughs> to do a survey, right? But guess what? They hardly ever hung up on Pat. She had, she had a very convincing voice, a calm voice, a relaxing voice that people just couldn't turn away. And she was the best interviewer and recruiter that we had. She excelled at everything she did. She talked to truck drivers. She talked to young mothers. She talked to people just out of the hospital. She asked people their opinions about the last burger they ate or the last dish of ice cream they had. She could talk to anybody about anything. I would even have people come in to do a focus group at our facility, and they would say, where's Pat? I want to see Pat. I want to talk to Pat. 
She's the one who recruited me, and, she, and I'm here because of her. So we became fast friends, and we shared a lot of things, thoughts and experiences. We often took lunch together in the, in the break room, and of course, Pat and Shirley's lunch would be a four-course meal, and I would have a can of tuna, but because we all know Shirley was a great cook. Um, but I got to witness Nikki and Lakeisha and Tori grow up at Market Research Institute, and they got to watch, Pat got to watch my son grow up a bit too. We often shared their accomplishments and the things they were doing, and oftentimes I would walk in and Pat would go, oh Cheryl, those kids are getting on my last nerve. And I would say, and Pat, my kid is getting on my last nerve too. So there we go. But mostly we talked about how good you all were, how proud she was of all of you, and how much she loved you. Now you all know Pat is a singer, and I'm sad to say that I never really got to hear her sing fully in church or in the choir. That's a regret I have. But I did get to hear her sing. In between calls on the phone, she'd sing a few lines, waiting for somebody to answer the phone. Um, I'd hear her singing in the kitchen when she was waiting for her food to heat up in the microwave, and I could even walk into the restroom any time of day, and there she would be singing. <laughs> we shut down uh, in the early 2000s, and we all went our separate ways and all got different jobs, but Pat and I stayed in touch. It was only by telephone, and it was, you know, sporadic and here and there, but as soon as she called her, me or I called her, we would fall right back into our talking about our experiences, our kids, doing a little gossip, solving all the problems, and that sort of thing. And, I, and she would always say to me, and this is what I'll miss about her, I would say, Pat, how's it going? And, and her reply would always be, oh, we're doing all right. Oh, we're doing all right. So I'll, I will miss those calls. And I'll leave you with this. During Shirley's celebration of life, right here in the same place, I got to witness my friend Pat enjoying the spirit of the music, the spirit of the church, and the spirit of the Lord. I sat where I'm sitting today, and she sat where Tyrone is sitting, but every time the music would start, she would jump up, and she would, her hands would be up, and her feet would be moving, and, and it was just a beautiful thing to see. And so I grabbed my phone, and <laughs> I hit video, and I recorded that, I recorded that so I could see my friend Pat feeling all that spirit and love and joy. And this week when Nikki called me, or last week when Nikki called me to tell me that Pat had passed, I was so sad. And then I remembered, oh wait, I have this video of her. And I bet I watched that video 20 times this week just so I could feel her joy and her spirit. And I know that's what she's doing right now. Thank you. Some of you may know who I am, and some of you may not. I'm Erica. She probably talked about me a lot. Um, I was Miss Pat's last supervisor when she worked for Weight Watchers. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Um, one of the joyous times that I had with Miss Pat was when she said, girl, won't he do it? <laughs> and I'm going to miss those things about her. And when I was in my journey of becoming a supervisor, I said, Miss Pat, when I become a supervisor, I'm coming to get you. You best believe I'm coming to get you. And when I became a supervisor, I said, Miss Pat, she was like, girl, I couldn't wait. When they told me the news... <laughs> And the remembrance that I have of her was my, my sister is here with me because she used to sit next to her. 
And she was like, that's my Ms. Pat. I said, no, I let her borrow. You let her borrow you, okay? She borrowed you for the time I wasn't able to, so you kept her until you left, and then she came back mine. But we prayed. She, when I wanted to go zero to 100, she was like, nope. Keep the faith. Um, our coaching sessions wasn't even coaching sessions. She would sing. She would pray for me. She would, I would, she would talk about her family. I knew Nikki before Nikki knew, you know, I knew who she was, you know, and, and Tyler and her baby girl and everybody here at the church. She loved her church family. And one of the, another good thing that I can say about Miss Pat, she was always in good spirit. She was always in good spirit. And the last call that I had with her, it will always stick with me because I told her, I said, Miss Pat, when you get up there, you tell my guardian angel her time is up and you are now my guardian angel. And we just had a laugh about it because she knew I was serious. And um, I told her that I loved her and she loved me too. And I felt better at that point. Um, but Nikki and her family, um, Keep doing what you guys are doing. Keep living life like she would want you to. Um, stay going on vacations. Um, just church choir and her church family. Just keep her in your love and prayer because she's always going to be there with you. Thank you. Amen. Those of you that have been in church all your life, you know that this is a program and services can change in a moment. Uh, the family has to be at the funeral, I mean at the cemetery at 1230. So we're going to ask those who are down for remarks, if and also that you would read your reflections on your time. And those who are going to do remarks, we ask that you would come back during the pass, repass, excuse me, and that that opportunity you would be able to do your remarks and also the video tribute will be played downstairs. Amen. Now, unless you want to pay the money that's going to cost at the, at the cemetery, if you're welcome to do that, if we got volunteers, you, you can come on up. And, but we don't want to put no burden on this family. Amen. 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 You that know and have been in this place before, you know that cemeteries, they don't, they don't care. And they ain't taking no check. They won't cash. I better talk to the folk on this side. Amen. So at this time, we're going to have the final selection from the choir, and the next speaking voice that you will hear will be none other than her pastor. Amen. The pastor of this church, Christian Tabernacle Church of God in Christ, none other than Pastor Keith A. Newton. We appreciate everyone's flexibility. Uh, we just got a second word. We got a little extra time. So here's what we're going to do. Everybody flowing with me today? Amen. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, close out with right now. But before we get to right now, and before I get to my message, I want to do a song that y'all are going to sing with me. This is the Pat always sang here at Christian Tabernacle over the years. And it goes a little like this. God is a good God. Yes. God is a good God. Oh, God is a good God. God is a good God. 
What do you know about Jesus? He's right. What do you know about Jesus? He's right. What do you know about Jesus? He's right. What do you know about Jesus? Right. Have you tried Jesus? Right. Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? Have you tried Jesus? He's all right. 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 Why won't you try Jesus? Try Jesus. Why won't you try Jesus? Try Jesus. He's all right. 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 What do you know about Jesus? 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 Clap your hands, everybody. If you know he's all right, just shout his name. If you know he's all right, shout his name out. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for him, everybody. Clap your hands for him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. At the request of Sister Nikki, we're going to go to the video tribute. We're going to go to the video tribute at the request of the family. And we'll flow from there. God bless all of you.
like, no, I'm like, I'm like, 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 like,
believe God. Yeah, I will choose. Yes, I will. To believe. I will choose to believe. I believe God. I will choose. I will choose to believe. Shut 
we're going to do, I'm going to give my time to the other selected remarks, and I'll come back and do a couple of minutes. Um, I've, I was enjoying these remarks. What we're just going to ask, though, is that you don't do the 20-minute version. <laughs> we'll just ask you to do a shorter version. All right? So we're going to, I think we left off with Robin Morgan. He's gone. Okay. Well, then we will go to Brother Hill, Brother Ronald Hill, yeah. Elder Wilbur Smith, Jr., Mother Mary Tyler, and Sister Carol Relaford in that order. Y'all just come right. As soon as the other person finishes, the next person be right, be in place. God bless you. Man, I praise God for being here. I praise God for my friend, Pat. Pat and I have been friends for over 50 years. And as I believe I heard Evangelist Lambert say, <laughs> we never, ever had a harsh word. We would fuss and fight because Pat was always so faithful and she was always giving, 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 giving. And I told Pat, just stop giving so much. I'm over what we have here, the fourth Sunday fellowship. Pat always, Ronnie, what you need? Ronnie, what you need? Ronnie, I'm going to do this. Pat, sit down somewhere. Ronnie, I'm going to help you with the, uh, uh, I want to serve and I want Pat. There's other people in this church. But I want to, Pat sit down. But that was just Pat. She was faithful. She was dedicated. And she loved doing what she's doing. I believe that when Pat uh, started getting sick and couldn't do what she wanted to do or like she used to do, that was the worst part of her sickness. Not that she was feeling bad. It's just that she couldn't be as faithful as she wanted to be. She couldn't be here. And for whatever reason, Pat felt like, I need to be here so the church can go on. She would call me when she couldn't um, get a, uh, she couldn't drive. Ronnie, will you pick me up? Pat, I live on this side. You live on that side of the church, but I'll come get you. And uh, so sometimes when Pat would, after church, I would just take Pat. Pat, what are you doing? I'm going to just go home. No, we're going to go eat. Her restaurant was Texas Roadhouse. So I'd have to save up my little pennies and nickels, and I would take Pat because she was so faithful. She was always giving, giving, giving. I wanted to give back to her. And so those are some of the fun memories that I have of Pat. There's so many more, but I'm going to allow others to uh, have a word to say, a word to say in Pat's honor. So come on, y'all. Y'all, come on. Time is of the essence, because I can tell you some more. Oh, oh, Wilbur. I'm sorry, I forgot. I'm sorry, Brother Wilbur. First of all, let's give God a big hand for, uh, for the gift that he gave us in Sister Pat. Uh, I could give you an hour, maybe a week-long dissertation about our relationship, but I've known Pat since I was a tot. She was only one year older than me. And uh, they started at uh, Bishop Chambers Church. And then they went to Elder Monroe's Church. And they went to, uh, they shortly, the uh, elder and sister Parker uh, pastored for a while. And then they went to Faith Mission, and the rest is history. I was, uh, I was with Faith Mission for the better part of eight years. Sister Rose, when she, when I told her who I was, she just busted out laughing. Now I wonder why. But anyway, <laughs> we were, uh, uh, actually, we were all, the whole church was, was one family. Uh, we enjoyed each other. Uh, we clowned with each other. And I think that between me and Tyrone, we were fighting for the clown prince of Faith Mission. <laughs> Pat had a way of, and, and I, I would hate to look at her when something bad would go into church. You see that, that look on her face right there? When something would go bad, I'd look at her and she'd give me that look and she would drop her head and laugh. And a lot of times when, and, and, and uh, if, you, if you have gray hair, you remember uh, some of this stuff that happened at Faith Mission. If you saw me with my head down, with tears in my eyes, and I was shaking, 
I wasn't in the spirit. <laughs> I was cracking up because Pat had a way of cracking me up, and Tyrone was probably the worst of all. Elder Lambert used to stay on us uh, constantly about hygiene, about the way we acted, the way we looked. We fixed him one, one service. Uh, he was mad because of the, what we were playing. And we were, we were actually playing Herbie Hancock. <laughs> and he said, stop, just stop, just stop. Play, just make some noise. We made some noise. Hit that bargain like, yeah, that's exactly what I did. And Tyrone just, and he, he was so mad he couldn't say anything. But we fixed him that day. Amen. Uh, Pat was, uh, was a great singer, uh, she, but she wasn't, she wasn't arrogant, she was humble with it, and, and uh, she didn't like to be, well, she wasn't flashy at all, but Pat could sing. No, Pat could sing, and if I learned anything from her, and uh, we had a long, long, long talk sometimes, uh, working with the choir, uh, you know, they said that uh, the devil does his best work in the choir. And I was struggling trying to figure out exactly where he was. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we never fought, you know, we never did. But sometimes I would, I would say things that would bring people. Say, he said that? Yeah, I said that. Uh, a lot of times, uh, and, and if you work with choirs, the devil likes to work with families, and they want to bring families in, in conflict. Well, I would do stuff so that they would be mad at me. At least I had their attention, and they were together. And I thank God for that. I was uh, just a few minutes ago, I said about Herbie Hancock, uh, I, I, I need to make a confession for uh, me and Tyrone. A lot of times we would, and I'm, I'm through, a lot of times, uh, well, not a lot of time, most of the time, after we left uh, service on Sunday night, and sometimes during revivals, when we left church, we took church to Club Swahili. And, and we, would, we would bless them, and they would dance, and they would shout, <laughs> be in some kind of spirit. But God bless. I, I, I really enjoyed the, the time that I was at Faith Mission. And uh, Pat, uh, like I said, one thing that I learned from her, if you believe, God will work a miracle for you. I'm, I'm a living miracle, and I'm, I'm going to shut up after this. The Lord has brought me through heart attack prostate cancer, I have a defibrillator, heart, just a heart failure, and through all of that, I held on to that right at that point. I wasn't fearful before I found out, and I wasn't fearful when I found out. I just trusted in God, and look at me. I'm a walking miracle, and if, if, you, if you believe, God will work a miracle for you. to God today, to everyone, and to the family. I just thank God for having us say about Pat. Pat and I, we was, we was all in faith mission. We all growed up together. And I thank God that she was on the evangelistic team. And Pat was uh, over us and teach, and that team was the Ever Ready team. That was the team that went with Pastor Lambert. And we was ready at all times. And she would teach us songs to say. Now, she didn't really need us because we were singing by herself. But she would teach us as a group 
of saints that was going with Pastor Newt, I mean, Pastor Lambert. And I thank God for uh, Pat. She was a wonderful person to travel with. We all lived in the same room together. We had great times. And Pat was just a loving person that you could love. You know, some people, you can really love them and come attached to them. And I just thank God for her on today and how she lived her life before us and she would lead us. And we would just have a great time all the time and travel. Because at that time, we was traveling all over the United States. We've been all over the United States. And I tell you, Pat, would, we would get in the room and Shirley and we just laugh and have a good time with each other. We had a good relationship. And I remember when Pat um, was raising Shirley, I mean, uh, Nikki and uh, Shirley was uh, with her. They kept them uh, girls looking so good. And we just tell you, you all are just mother to children, you know, because she was a loving person. And I just thank God for her on today to be here to say something about Pat Parker. And right now, if you believe, God will work a miracle for you. Good afternoon to the family and to everyone that's here. I just want to, I am very, very honored to be here to just say something about this beautiful, beautiful woman of God. I met Pat back in 2011. Uh, I met her at, when we were on a cruise with uh, Burma Brown. Um, she has a, a business and she allows people to travel. But I met her and Shirley and I, um, I thought they were twins because they were so close and they had so many mannerisms and things like that. But we became fast friends and I just realized that, I did not realize that she was a member of Christian Tabernacle because I would visit here every so often, but I did not uh, know her from that. But I just remember how engaging she was and her smile and her personality and um, I just felt like we made a really, really good connection and I never forgot who she was, and then a few years after that, I joined Christian Tabernacle, I became a member, and so she happened to be a member here. And I just remember uh, the same person being so thoughtful and giving and friendly, but the thing I remember the most about Pat was when I started a ministry here, when I was given the opportunity to lead, that I don't think my ministry would have thrived without that lady that was such a giving person. We have a ministry for the homeless in our community and she would give in abundance, in abundance. She would never miss the opportunity to either put money or to bring what we needed in abundance. So I was just in awe of her generosity and her faithfulness. And I would think that if half the members of churches would give as she did, we would lack nothing. We would have everything that we need monetarily and with the material things that she provided. I just thank God for her friendship. I thank her for her loyalty and her faithfulness. And this lady was truly gifted because she moved me when she sang. I just was in awe of her gifts that God had provided. And I thank God for having the opportunity to know and be a part of her um, just circle of friends. Thank you for allowing me to have this time to speak. Thank you, sir.
I was sitting there listening and I thought of a quick story regarding Pat. In Sunday school, we would have questions and quizzes on our Sunday school lessons. And Sister Anita was teaching at that time and she would ask the questions and my hand would go up like I really had the answer and I'm ready to give the answer. And I'd look across the room and Pat would be standing. She would beat me with the answer. And when I look over there at Pat, she would look at me like right, what's right here on this picture. Like, yes, I beat you. <laughs> so that I will miss. Uh, staying within our time constraints, I will read the names of the churches and organizations that have sent uh, words of comfort and love to family and friends. We have uh, Missouri Midwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction, Mocan Region Department of Women, uh, Bishop Elijah H. Hankinson, the third general board member. We have from the desk of Mother T. Marie Brown, supervisor of women, Missouri Midwest Ecclesiastical Jurisdiction. We have Christian Tabernacle, her, her own home church, Church of God in Christ. We have Rock of Ages, Missionary Baptist Church, uh, Reverend Robin M. Morgan, pastor, we have Progressive Church of God in Christ, Pastor Elder Kenneth Price. We have uh, Keith and Carnesha Caldwell. We have Kingdom Authority Worship, Cent Worship Center, Apostle Jannar J. Smith, Senior Pastor. We have New Hope International Fellowship of Churches Incorporated. And that is Bishop Michael D. Hardy, Sr., presiding prelate, Apostle Ethel M. George, assistant presiding prelate. We have Pentecostal, Church of God in Christ, Bishop Daniel M. Jordan, pastor. We have the Scripture Shower Family, KPRT Gospel. And we have Christ Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, Reverend S. Willis Walker, pastor, and All the World of This Life Church, Pastor DeRay D. Penny. These letters will be given to the family so that they can read them at a later date. Thank you. We've got one more uh, remark, and that's going to come from Sister Anita Potts, and she's going to represent Sister Pat Parker when she was at our location on 40th and Woodland. I don't know anything about Woodland because I was a baby. Um, when I walked in the room with the family, a couple of ladies spoke to me and they looked like Pat, but I, I'm sorry, I didn't know who you all were. I can't see them now, but when they spoke to me, I said, Hi, but I didn't really know who they were, and I'm assuming they probably remember me from Woodland, but I don't know anything about Woodland. So uh, before I give my couple of minutes, uh, Sister Anita Potts is going to represent Sister Pat Parker from our Woodland location. Hey, Amen. 40th and Woodland, Pat and Shirley and Tyrone and Missionary Parker and Minister Parker. One thing about it, Patricia loved the Lord. Me and Shirley would be over here clowning. Patricia would be praying. And she was our choir director. And, of course, everybody in the church had to be in the choir because it was only about, what, 20 of us? Is that right, my sister, Edna? I think it was about 20 of us. And, and we all had to get up and sing. And Pat was our director. And we had to sing loud. Because we got on a broadcast there one time, and then Pat became uh, Pastor Newton's nurse at that time. She would go to work, she would come and be his nurse. And we was, we was uh, amazing at because uh, we had never seen a nurse before help a pastor, but she did. She did do that. And praise God, whatever... If we had a problem with everything, she would tell us just to pray and stop complaining. <laughs> she didn't like complaining. She wanted you to pray. Amen. So, 
Those are the good days. The game. Cheryl was little. I think Cheryl was, what, five or six? Oh, her and Renee were shouting. Yeah, they shouted hard. <clears throat> and Keith is right. He was a baby. And we just, isn't it amazing how you can go back and look how God brought you over? Hallelujah. I just wanted to say that in the 40th and Woodland days, and then they went to faith mission from us. But we just, I'm so glad that I met, hi Tyrone, how you doing? I'm so glad I met this family in 64. It was in 64 that we started Christian Tabernacle. And I just thank God, and I, I, I'm going to sit, sit down now, Keith. Well, we thank God for this day. I will say that Sister Pat was definitely a praiser, and that's how we're going to close this service out with a, with a high praise, uh, singing right now, if you believe. Not yet, but that's how we're going to close out when it's time for us to go. Uh, Sister Pat was faithful. Thank you, Brother Drew. She was faithful. She was available. She was teachable. Uh, under my father's leadership and under mine. She was not a problem member in any way, shape, form, or fashion. Uh, and I praise God for the life that she lived. I praise God for the faith that she had in God. She trusted God and believed God all the way through. When I would go to see her, um, we would sing. And she would sing and I'll, I'm going to share with Nikki, uh, I recorded one of the times that I went and we sang a little bit. And uh, it was uh, a blessing to my soul. No, she didn't sound the same. She had lost her range, but you still could feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> you could still feel the Holy Ghost in her singing. Even though her voice may have physically sounded weak. The Holy Ghost was still there. And we thank God for her living a life of a praiser. Somebody say Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost was still there. And he gave her strength and he gave her that anointing to sing and to minister to people. And she had a humble heart. And I said to the choir in the rehearsal, and they did an excellent job. Would y'all give them a hand? They did an excellent job of ministering these songs that she sang, um, I said to them that she didn't sing until the power came down. She walked to the mic with the power already. That means she's been living this thing and not just performing it. It's too much performance in the church. And I thank God that Sister Pat Parker was not about performance. She had a heart for God, and it came out in her voice. It came out in her smile. It came out in her servanthood. So I want to share that. I wanted to share that. Uh, uh, it is very important. If you remember anything, uh, please keep in mind what so many people have said today about her being a praiser. Bishop Douglas says she was a worshiper, and that took me to a quote that I heard from a man named Chuck Pierce. He says, when we worship, we ascend, and when we ascend, we gain revelation from God. When we worship, we ascend, and when we ascend, we gain revelation from God. When we praise God, it becomes easier for us to recognize what's going on in and around us. We must live a life of praise and worship to God. Tremaine Hawkins uh, sung a song uh, that says, I've lost some good friends along life's way. Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay. But thank God I didn't lose everything. 
I lost faith in people who say they care. In the time of my crisis, they were never there. But in my disappointment, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered, one thing never changed. I never lost my hope. I never lost my joy. I never lost my faith. But most of all, I never lost my praise. I want to say this to you all today. There are things that come against us. There are things that come against us. There's all kind of spirits and things that come against us. In this past week of consecration that we've had, it, we have taken some hits in the Newton family. In my household, we have taken some hits. But we thank God that when we got together, the three of us got together. When, uh, th was it Thursday night or Friday night? Whichever one of them night. Friday night, Emerald's here. We got together and we just hugged and we just started crying and thanking God. Thank you, Lord. 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 And while I was saying that, I was actually thinking about Pat saying that while she was laying on the bed. She was praising God. Tears coming down her face. Praising God. The words coming her mouth, or out of her mouth were words of praise and faith she believed God all the way let us continue that to the family members we praise God for each of you and we're praying for each of you we're believing God for each of you I want you all to know that God is right where you are with whatever you are dealing with. Wait, this ain't just for family. This is for all of us. God is right where we are with whatever it is that we're dealing with. Why not give whatever we're dealing with him to him? While whatever we're dealing with, give it to him and then close it out giving him praise. Surrender to him. When hurts, problems, trials, and tribulations come into your life, there's nothing in this world that heals like Jesus. Yeah. Men, would you agree that the women that God put on this earth are beautiful? Yeah. Women, would you agree that the men that God put on this earth are great, handsome, all that, whatever y'all looking for? Nobody can do us like God. We got self-help this and self-help that and, and video clips for this and, and video clips for that and life coaches all over the place and, and books and blogs and vlogs and all of this stuff, but nobody can do us like Jesus. Give your life to him if you haven't. This could be your service next week. Let's not wait. Let's not waste any time with this. I've had conversation with so many people over the years, especially in such settings like this. A-Reb, R-E-B. A-Reb. <laughs> I'm going to see you tomorrow, Reb. Or some of them would say, I got to get my life right. I heard you talk about getting saved and all that, but I got to do some stuff first before I come in. And have y'all ever had conversations with people that was talking like that? Listen, tomorrow's not promised. Two o'clock this afternoon is not promised. Give your life to Jesus. Mm -hmm. He's waiting for you. Jack Daniels can't fix it. Weed can't fix it. A side chick can't fix it. Money can't fix it. Cars and nice clothes can't do like Jesus can. Give him a try and watch what he'll do in your life. You're not living no best life if Jesus is not your Lord and Savior. No, you're not. No, you're not, because all of that is temporary. That's one of the things that made Sister Pat so effective. She didn't play around with this thing. 
I truly believe that though she was not perfect, I believe she humbled herself under the sight of God and, and repented. Otherwise, she would not have had the spirit. Check your phones, please. Check your phones. She would not have had the, 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 the spiritual power that she had when she came to this mic if she didn't check herself before God. <laughs> Last couple of words that I'm going to say before the choir comes to sing that powerful song is I truly believe she believed God for her healing. She told me that she had gotten tired. She told me that there were times when she was battling and struggling with whether to give up or not. And Nikki told me some things that she said and things like that. And I want to say to you, Nikki, I don't know if you are the only one, but I know I've talked to you. I applaud you, Nikki, for what you did for her. If there are others that were there, I applaud you all too, even though I may not know. I applaud you all as well for sticking with your family member. I thank God for uh, family members that love, that truly love and show their love and their patience and their care and concern. And we all need family like that. And, and listen, you all, the Parker family is going to need us uh, next week. Amen. They're going to need us next month. Yeah, yeah. They're going to need us uh, on, on, on birthdays and uh, anniversaries of this and anniversaries of that. You all, let's be there for them. Let's not be all in their face today. And if you're in their face today, get some mints. I got some for you. Uh, no, that's not negative. It's not. It's, it's, it, come on, y'all. That ain't negative. It's real. I ain't receiving nothing you saying, and I can see the words that you saying. I don't, I don't know what you said because I'm too busy wondering why. Somebody said that they was taught about hygiene and stuff, so let's keep all of that in mind when you're in this, in this family's face. Amen. All right. If you don't have a church home, social media church ain't enough. You got to get in the family, live and in person. Watching a service is not going to do it. COVID. You don't say that when you're all over the other places. Get involved in a family. Let's go to A-flat. Get involved in a church family. And... Allow someone to teach you. Allow someone to help you grow. There was something that I want to say this about Sister Pat and Shirley that they both said to me in the choir. Y'all can stand. We're getting ready to go into right now if you believe. They both said to me at one time or another, just a little more, a little more, a little more quiet. They both said to me, when, when you first took over, I had questions. Because I came from there here. Yeah, I am. And they said, I had some questions. But you have truly proven to be a man of God. And I apologize. And they humbled themselves under the leadership. That's a lesson that I took to follow those leaders that are over me. That's a lesson that we all should take, which is one to humble ourselves under the sight of God. Y'all receive that today? That's how you become effective. Sister Pat's going to be talked about for years to come because she was a humble woman. Somebody said it in their remarks. She wasn't all about Pat. She was truly trying to get us to God. Yeah. 
So when she sang this song right now, if you believe God can work a miracle for you, she really believed it. He'll take your feet out of the what? Out of the miry clay. He'll place them on what? A rock to stay for the people that don't know the song. He'll, what is the next line? He'll turn your life around and put you on higher ground. He said he'd work a miracle for you. And if you believe it, that's exactly what he's going to do. So when the choir sings this, I need you all not just to look on. I need you all to sing with the choir. If you was in faith mission and sung it, come up and sing with us. If you was old Christian tabernacle and you sung it, come up. You got to hurry up, though. Come up and sing it. Either way, let's all join in together and let's go out on a high celebration. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. That's too fast. Right now. Lock it in. Lock it in right there. Don't speed it up. Leave it right there. Set free. 
for flowers and the pallbearers. And I'm going to ask Pastor Whitley if he will give us our closing prayer. And we're going to go we're going to go out on right now if you believe. Father God, we thank you for this service. God, we ask that you continue to bless this family. Lift them up higher as we give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen. If you Touch our minds, touch our hearts, 